The size of India's manufacturing sector is expected to be $1 trillion by 2025. In the latest budget, the union government has allocated 10 lakh crores of capital expenditure towards infrastructure. There are policies in place like the Smart Cities Mission, the Production-Linked Incentive Scheme, Housing for All under the Prime Minister's Awas Yojana, Construction of Roads and Highways under the Bharat Mala Par Yojana. All these policies suggest that non-stop construction activities will go on for several years in the future. This creates the need for a lot of equipment necessary for such construction activities. The company we are going to discuss today is taking advantage of this situation and has already multiplied investors' wealth. Just in the last 12 months, the stock has gone up more than 140% and still it seems unstoppable. It is said that the stock market is a place where money gets transferred from the impatient to the patient. So to know the name of this stock, you would have to be a little patient. Consider it a training exercise for all retail investors. And you can become an early investor in this microcap channel just by clicking on subscribe. Namaste and welcome to Retail Investing. So here is the financial overview of the company. The market capitalization is roughly 8000 crore rupees and the price has touched a high of 822 rupees and a low of 264 rupees in the last 52 weeks. The price to earnings multiple is 41.4 which is significantly higher than the industry average of 34.3. The industry PE is being shown based on companies like Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, Bharat Dynamics Limited, Jupiter Wagons, Praj Industries, etc. This does not seem to be an accurate peer comparison. In fact, this company seems to be in a league of its own. The return on capital employed is 26.2% and the return on equity is 18.8%. These are very impressive numbers considering the industry in which the company operates. The asset turnover ratio of 1.5 shows the company is really efficient. The company has a tiny debt of 7.45 crore rupees and reserves of 895 crore rupees. It is a negligible dividend yield. The company has been employing its capital very successfully and generating good returns. So I would not care about dividends. The contingent liabilities of 44 crore rupees are tiny compared to the huge cash reserves. The company has not pledged any of its shares. The quick ratio is 0.42 and the current ratio is 1.06. The current ratio is fine and it indicates a healthy balance sheet but the quick ratio does not seem to be good. The apparent reason for a not so good quick ratio is issues with inventory. Both the current and quick ratios are liquidity ratios. The current ratio is calculated by dividing the current assets by the current liabilities. The quick ratio is a much stricter version and to calculate it, you would have to subtract the inventory from the numerator that is from the current assets. As you can see, the inventory size has gone up a lot in the last two years. A larger inventory will give you a lower quick ratio as the equation suggests. It may be too early to say if the company is having any real issues with its inventory. There may be some accounting nuances involved here. Here is the company's profit and loss statement. As you can see, the sales have been consistently growing. It was 857 crores in 2012 and it reached 2160 crores in 2023. In the last five years, the sales growth has compounded at 15% and in the last three years, it has compounded by a massive 23%. When it comes to expenses, material cost contributes the highest, that is 71% of its expenses. The operating profit margin is 11%. The taxes paid have been consistent, which means there is no risk of sudden high tax liability. The growth in earnings per share has been really impressive in the last 18 months. The profit Profit growth has compounded by 25% in the last 5 years and in the last 3 years it has compounded by a whopping 45%. The operating cash flow has always been positive which is a rare thing to find. This is the best way to run a business. You operate only if your operations can generate cash flows. Here is the shareholding pattern. The promoters hold 66.76% stake in the company. Foreign institutional investors hold 6.51% and domestic institutional investors hold 3.45% stake in the company. A very interesting thing is that the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, popularly known as the MIT, is a shareholder and owns 3.31% of the company. The MIT is one of the leading science and technology institutions in the entire world. If they believe in the company, there may be something special about it. Maybe the company has an edge in research and development. They have already built India's first fully electric mobile crane and also India's largest mobile crane. By the way, the name of the company is Action Constructions Equipment Limited.
In 2023, the company's insiders have bought thousands of shares. When the insiders of a company sell shares, there could be many reasons behind it. It could be simply because they need the money or it could be because the company's future prospects could be in trouble. But whenever the insiders of a company buy shares, there is only one reason behind it. They think that the stock is going to go really up. The insiders always have more insights on the company than any outsiders like fund managers can ever have. Talking about price, I think it's a good idea to look at the volumes which can give us an idea of its volatility or stability. Usually for small caps, the traded volume is in thousands. The weekly average traded volume for this stock is in lakhs which is a lot for any small cap stock. This indicates that the stock is likely to be more stable than most small cap stock. Investing in a small or micro cap stock with very low trading volumes is riskier but also it can generate the highest returns possible. So retail investors should make a decision on small cap investing based on their own circle of competence. As per the price forecast of an analyst whom I am not going to name, the price is expected to correct to levels of 435. Now I am not sure if that's going to happen but I hope it really happens. It would be a great discount to buy and hold. The company has 8 manufacturing sites and one research and development site at Faridabad, Haryana. The product portfolio can be divided into 4 main categories. Construction equipment, road construction equipment, earth moving machinery and agricultural equipment. Here is the company's expected future sources of revenues. The highest contribution is going to be from cranes at 67%, construction equipment at 15%, agriculture equipment at 11% and material handling equipment at 7%. As of 2022, they had an annual manufacturing capacity of 12,000 construction equipment and 9,000 tractors. The company is the world's largest pick and carry crane manufacturer and they have a pan-India presence and also global presence in 37 countries. Internationally, it mainly operates in places like the Middle East, Africa and Latin America. In places like Europe and North America, there is not much room left for infrastructure growth. The company's strategy of expanding in Africa and Latin America shows a clear vision for the future. Action Construction was established in 1995 by Mr. Vijay Agarwal, who is the current chairman and managing director. He has an experience of over 50 years in the industry. I always prefer companies led by experienced, boring, old men to companies led by young, energetic boys. Somehow it has worked well for me. The company's tagline is lifting India's growth. I think it's very appropriate since the company is the market leader in tower cranes with a 63% market share. Infrastructure development really needs cranes for lifting. Back in 2020, the company filed a patent for its multi-activity crane. I could not find out whether the patent was granted or not. A patent will give the company pricing power and complete dominance over the industry. I am not sure if the government is going to allow that. Action Construction has been capitalizing on government capex and policies which aim to boost infrastructure. The Prime Minister's Gati Shakti plan will invest 100 lakh crore rupees to build national infrastructure. The Smart Cities mission had the target of developing 100 cities by 2023. As of 2022, only half of the projects have been completed. In 2024, 14,000 kilometers of national highways are to be built. There will be 23 new highways including a network of expressways and economic corridors by 2025. The real estate sector is expected to reach $1 trillion by 2025 and contribute to 13% of national GDP. Retail, hospitality and commercial real estate is growing fast and is likely to heavily contribute to the real estate sector's growth. Under the National Logistics Policy, an efficient logistics industry is planned to reach the tier 2, 3 and 4 towns which makes it a huge market. To implement and complete these projects, a lot of construction activities have to be undertaken and that will require a lot of equipment. In such a scenario, the future revenues for action construction can only go up. One common problem with companies involved in infrastructure businesses is that they have to take on a lot of debt. But action construction is almost a zero debt company with excellent return on capital employed and asset turnover. A market capitalization of 8000 crores is still tiny and a tenfold growth by 2030 seems reasonable. As of now, action construction seems to be enjoying a monopoly, at least in the listed space. Retail investors must not ignore the threat of new entrants before making a decision. It's better to find out whether there are any unlisted companies working in this sector and if there are such companies, can they be a threat to action construction? I personally have seen a lot of ace cranes in most places where construction activities were ongoing. And I have also seen a few cranes of other companies as well. Real life research can be interesting. 
So please do it. Now, please don't consider any of this as investment advice. Just because I said so many nice things about the company does not mean that you should go and invest in it. The purpose of this video was to disseminate information. Please do your own research. Try your best to find the negatives about this company and rebut everything I said in this video. That's how great investors are born. The only way to implement the two golden rules of investing is by imagining anything that could possibly go wrong with the company. If all those possibilities can be eliminated before investing, only then you are following rule number one. And if you really follow rule number one, you end up making a ton of money. If there was anything valuable in this video, please like and share. Thank you very much for joining and we shall meet again. Jai Hind.